What's happening everyone, Art at Patience Metal Fab, and I'm out in the shop talking about a project that's been put on the back burner over the last couple of months. Now the long story short is it's one of the owner's builds, and as often happens when we start getting busy around the shop, especially in our fall and winter season, the employee and owner builds go on the back burner. Now, if you guys have been keeping up with our page, you should know about it. It's an S13 240SX with all-wheel drive swap, RB30 DT, and a full chromoly cage and chassis. It's a really cool car. If you guys aren't familiar, I'm gonna throw a link up here so you can watch all the episodes leading up to this one. Now, this is gonna be pretty exciting because we are gonna be working on the firewall. That's one of the big fabrication projects that needs to take place before we can move forward. We've got an R33 Skyline front and an S13 240SX rear from the firewall back that needs to get joined together. Then, if you guys have seen the last couple of episodes, you know I've been working on the custom floor panels for that car. They're ready to get spot welded in, so we're gonna finalize that and have a car that actually looks like a rolling chassis. And after that, we're gonna be moving on to some engine work. We need to mock it up in the engine bay to get to a point where we can do a custom intake and exhaust manifold for that vehicle. There's a lot left to do, and we're gonna get started, get the series rolling again, and get you guys as excited as I am to see this thing up and running. Ben's been working away on this firewall for the last two or three hours, and it looks like maybe one third of it is fully done before it gets ground down and kind of becomes seamless. So why does this take so long? Why can't you just lay a huge bead around this and call it a day? So because I have to work probably an inch by inch, because as the weld is done, it shrinks the metal. So then afterwards, you have to hammer and dolly the weld out to stretch the metal back out, which is how we get the nice smooth finish. So once we grind it and paint it, you won't even know it's there. So it's a laborious process. He has to go inch by inch, like he said, and then go back and forth between welding, adding heat, and then stretching it back out so it doesn't malform. If you were just to do one entire beat around, it would be a huge mess. And at the end of the day, we want someone to look at this after it's been painted and not be able to tell that these are two different firewalls that have been merged together. Looks like we got a bit of a special delivery this morning, a big Cybon carbon piece that Brian's been waiting on for the S13. Uh, I assume this was a hood, but it's not. No, nope, this is the hatch. Okay, we got a hatch here, and we all know that when big pieces like this get delivered, there's a like five out of 10 chance that something is messed up with it. Hopefully not. We're gonna unbox it and see how the fit up is. We 
just mocked the hatch up and it looks awesome on here. Not only is it aesthetically pleasing, kind of all shaved down and the carbon fiber look, but also it's gonna save weight over the factory unit, which was pretty old and rusted and not looking so good. Uh, and I'm happy to say that we've kind of scoured it. There are no imperfections in terms of shipping damage. So that's awesome. It's always one of those items that you hold your breath on when it gets delivered. You never know how it's gonna turn out after especially a three month wait and being at multiple shipping companies. But it turned out awesome. So next steps for this, we're gonna wrap it back up, put it away safely somewhere, get back to work on the rest of the car. And one major component that we're waiting for is the body kit. Now I'm not gonna spoil any surprises, but it is a really cool kit that Brian's been waiting on, I think four months now, and there's probably a little bit uh, of time yet to go. But once we get that, we'll kind of mock everything up and give you a really good visual of what this car is gonna look like, because it'll be incredible by the time it's done. When it rains, it pours, I guess, because this build has been getting so much attention over the last week and a half. You can see the firewall is pretty much entirely done. All the floor pan pieces are in and fully welded. And now I come into the shop and it looks like the engine is getting disassembled. You can see the oil pan right here. And I wanted to take a minute with Brian to explain what we're doing here. Brian, I gotta say this RB26 pan is one of the most complicated I've seen. It's got a lot going on. I'm assuming it's for the all wheel drive system. Uh, we're about to make it even more complicated complicated with this. So can you explain what we got going on? Yeah, so what we're doing here is we're basically modifying the factory pan to install this extended sump uh, from Rob at Rips in Australia. He's been authority in the RB scene for many years. So what we did is I purchased his all-wheel drive adapter flange, which uh, incorporates to the RB30 block. Um, and then adapts the RB26 pan to it. With that is incorporated in the extended pickup for uh, this all-wheel drive flange. So what we're gonna do is cut out the bottom of the oil pan here uh, and very carefully weld in um, this extended sump. What that's gonna do is give us a little bit more capacity uh, for oil and a little bit better carriage for the pickup in there.
Ben just finished up the inside welds on that sump kit. So we are all finished up. We're just kind of waiting for it to cool down. And I think this would probably be a good way to wrap up this episode. We've done quite a lot. You guys saw we got the entire floor in. We got that firewall finished up, mostly maybe 98% done. And we started messing with the engine. So you guys saw the process it took to get this together. It was a lot of kind of nerve wracking cuts on this oil pan. It's one of those things that if you make a mistake, you're not getting another one of these very easily anyway. So Ben made really quick work of it, did a great job. The welds, as you can see, are awesome and they're penetrating through exterior and interior. Really solid pan. Where do we go from here with this whole thing? Where we're gonna go from here is we just need to mate the transmission up to the oil pan due to the all-wheel drive adapter flange. We're just gonna need to come in and elongate the four uh, bottom holes of the transmission to get those to mate. Um, while that's out, I have an OS Gicken triple plate clutch we'll put in there. We'll assemble the trans and get it back in the car for mock-up. What we're gonna do from there is essentially jump right into hot side and start building a manifold. And just like that, the momentum on this car is back on. There was a lot that happened in this one. If you guys enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe to the page. And the next episode, we're gonna dedicate it fully to that custom exhaust manifold and turbo placement. So it'll be just as, if not more exciting than this one. Stick around, we'll see you later.